Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Keith Polson is an actor. He sat down with me on the Upper West Side of Manhattan to talk about the work. You land the role, you get the script, what's the first thing you do? Well, the thing is, like most of the time now, I feel like when I, uh, you find out you get a role, it's just through email. And so it'll be, sometimes I get it and uh, I just woke up and I get the email. I mean, like, I know the question is asking, like, what do I do to prepare? But just like in the immediate thing, it's usually you just read an email and you kind of, a lot of times if you just audition for like, based on like one scene and you don't know the whole script, you'll then look at the script. And what I do a lot of times is like really kind of like um, sort of petty and selfish, but kind of honest answer. It's like a lot of times it's like a PDF and you can like, push control F and then you look at what your character's name is and then you type that in and then it'll tell you like how many how many times that your name pops up in the, in the script and then you can get like uh, Wait, okay so you're saying the first thing you do is hit control F yeah that's typically this my is... first <laughs> we're, t- we're talking about the craft of acting the craft. my first thing is control F <laughs> and no and so because I think that like when I'm like sort of thinking about uh, a thing is like it does matter how big your part is to gauge how you should play it. It does yes. matter. Like I did a movie a couple months ago, and this guy Ben, he said like your character's name is Duke, which I think that's goes a long way. Characters' names, you know, they matter. I mean, like if if you have like a uh, like another thing I did where like my character's name is Doug, and the other character's name is Stick. I realize, all right, I'm playing the straight man, probably in this thing. You know, like, there's, like, things like that. So you look at, like, names. You look at, like, where you show up. Uh, ben kind of, like, he told me, like, you know, you're showing up late and it's only a couple scenes, but I want you to be, like, kind of like a Harry Lime figure. It's like, oh, okay, cool, that's fun. Like, uh-huh. you know, you're, like, you're the guy that comes to, like, stir things up kind of, yeah, whatever, like, 50%, 60% into the movie. Um, and then, and then, like, the thing is, like, a lot of times when I do things, like, it's either too much time in between getting it and when we actually do it and if I know that like it's gonna be like nine months or a year and a half like sometimes like the time that I'm offered a part and the time we actually do it is like years I mostly like don't really focus on it too much uh-huh. and they would rather just meet up with the director and talk rather than like read the script because I feel like I'm not like the 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 movies that play like when I read a script and like let's say your imagination takes over and a movie starts playing out in your head my like baseline movie that plays in my head is so stupid and the actors are so bad <laughs> and that's why I'm not really good times that like a lot of times I'll auditioning stuff is like I'll read a script and I'll be like oh this is awful this is so bad I'm just like playing in my head and it's like oh my god that actor is so bad and then like <laughs> and then like, these will like turn out to be like good projects you know it's just like right. the, for whatever reason my lack of generosity towards the, like just the script is you're, you're like someone's gonna really mess up this line oh yeah I someone's mean not really not gonna gonna mess it up like it's it's like I just don't know like sometimes I have some <laughs> such a weird uh, calibration system uh, like in my head of just looking at things so if I can I try and just like talk with people who are making it and then they, a lot of times they'll like not even realize it, but they'll say like one sentence that'll like set you off in a certain direction. They'll say like, you know, I think this guy is actually very tragic. And you read the script and he's just like a, like a jerk. And you're like, oh, he's tragic. Okay, what is that? And then you like start mm. reading the script. And, you know, I definitely like, is, I'd love to say that I just read the script over and over. But the reality is like I mostly read the scenes that I'm in. Um, and depending on if it's, you know, a drama or a comedy, I sort of like play into how much I need to know what the rest of it is going on. Um, but yeah, so that's the main thing I think is control F. Is mm. every filmmaker that does a movie in New York City contractually obligated mm. <laughs> to at least consider Keith Paulson? No. It feels that way. I know. Um, I don't work with that many directors. I work with a lot of directors repeatedly. Right. So I think it sometimes seems like I'm working with more people than I am. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I'm working like a, with a lot more people um, than a lot of uh, actors are. But uh, I don't know. It's it's. I, I have no idea what the process is for why people come to me, and I don't ever like sort of ask why they're coming to me. And like, I try not to be so mean to myself where I think they're coming to me because I'm like the lazy, easy option. I don't know. That, that can't be true. Yeah. The, and I, I could tell you objective. I yeah. could tell you because I'm objective, and I, yeah. you know, I don't know you. We're not. Yeah. We're not friends. Yeah. That is not true. Uh, I, yeah, I think it's weird because like, I'm not. For me, like, I'm not like a seasoned New Yorker, 
And so it's funny being sort of, like, I've mostly worked in New York. When I was young, like New York independent filmmaking was like a thing at age like 13 or 14 that I was really drawn towards. Mm -hmm. So to be kind of a part of it and to be sort of like an active participant in what is very independent, very like low budget New York filmmaking, it happened. It seems like maybe like subconsciously like there was like some kind of intent that I had to get here because it was something I was so inspired by at a young mm -hmm. age. But it really, I mean, it was like the way everything kind of played out was not like maybe subconsciously I was like trying to put myself in positions that would guide me there mm -hmm. but um yeah but, I mean it's it's like working with actors or whatever who I I, I, wa I watched and stuff and uh, working in New York and all these things like that are like uh, the way it happened it's almost like the kind of like uh, turning up the heat on a stove or whatever like and you don't notice that suddenly it's boiling or whatever it's like yeah. there's stuff like that where I, I think that like I would have not that I think anything I'm doing is like crazy intimidating or crazy like high stakes whatever but like um if you had told like the version of me from 20 years ago or 10 years ago that like i would be doing it i would have been sort of surprised and tell me why because i was not um i think at, at a young age i was so away from filmmaking and, and i didn't know any actors growing up and so it wasn't like it almost felt like a, like a like a British caste system that you're born into. Um, to be yeah. from like a place that's not known for breeding artists that kind of get out there. And from being a, for the family that wasn't really had any connection to the art. And I was just somebody that really liked movies. And, um, and I went to school not to be an actor. I'm not trained as an actor. Um, so yeah, I think that's why. It was just a thing where it was like, I remember the first time somebody asked me to be in something, I remember thinking that they would regret it. And then when they like sort of seemed happy with what I had done, it was like kind of opened something up where I was like, oh, I mean, people act, like the thing that is great about like watching actors is that they're just he other human beings. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. this thing like, there's people that have like crazy skill set. There's people that are like trained where they can have this control and they can like deliver things that are working with material where it's directly what it's supposed to be. I think at like a lot of the core of it is like you just get to like look at humans and like as a you know I'm just like kind of fascinated by humans, so then by that same logic, well I am a human, I'm a human being. So I mean I shouldn't have written myself off that much, you know, because yeah. technically I do fit at least a lot of the characteristics of what an actor is, which is I'm a alive human being. Yeah, with a face. With a and, face yeah. and uh, and the ability to, uh, I don't know, not freak. Uh, the thing also is that I think by. Uh, slowly working my way up to, from I mean like the first movies I was doing it was like with a crew of two people and the, they were my friends um uh -huh. so you kind of at a certain point realize like like you know you like they have these like sort of competitions that like my 16 year old niece is doing these like 24 hour 48 hour film yeah. competitions whatever it's like they've now made a movie they are filmic I mean there's that I mean who knows how it's gonna be perceived who knows if it's good or bad or if it's gonna be like brought into a thing but just like for me just the act of doing it just the act right. of like having two friends who would want me to be in a thing that they were making was like not in my immediate sort of understanding of what acting was or right. who I was or anything like that. And so this is interesting that you, it's not like this dying dream you had. No. To be an actor. I had you, no dying dream though. Yeah. I had interest, but I didn't have, I felt like very, um, unsure of what would become me or what would happen but it wasn't full of like a ton of <clears throat> optimism like I wasn't like bleak about myself but like I was like sort of you know people kind of talk about like you know generations that were like very like very much you have to work really hard and other generations where it's like you're really special and you're really great and I feel like um, I'm just kind of in between there where I, you know, I don't think I had a really strong work ethic but also I wasn't really in a family or a, any kind of situation in school where I was like told that I was you know, gonna be anything or excel at anything. Mm -hmm. I was just sort of like, you know, whatever, like quiet dude is not really like causing much trouble, so we'll let him be, but no one's like kind of, you know, I'm just like another dude in the room. Right. So, um, so yeah, so I mean, it's like, I'm sure like because I was so obsessed with movies at a young age and um, I think before you think about cinematography or you think about directors, you think about the people. So, I mean, I think acting in some ways, I, I can act sort of like, um, or talk about it in a way where it's like, oh, I had no interest, but like, I can remember being like in the backyard, like mowing my lawn and like sort of having my headphones on and like picturing the idea of me being in a movie. Yeah. And I think a lot of yeah. people like live 
where you're like the kind of whatever protagonist of your own story so like it just overlies so it's not like a thing where like i like the first time somebody asked me there was no interest of any kind um even you know now i had the same the same level of, of, of like um you'll never be in my mind of like oh you wouldn't be an actor because actors know they're going to be actors at a young age and you didn't know that and you didn't think that i like still like those kind of feelings i had when i was young uh I have about like what type of actor I can be or what, you know, like, or like what kind of person I can yeah. be or what kind of man I can be. Yeah. There are these things where it's like, because you would know by now if you were that kind of thing, or, you know, and then, so yeah. it's like a slow push. Like for me, it's just like this expanding thing of like, and there's always a fear that I'm just going to hit a wall and I'll just like, everything will be revealed to me. And that was like the limits. But, um, but like, if it's like, if I find the limitations of my acting, which I still feel like I'm like kind of growing and trying to get a little bit better at, if I get to a wall and I can't grow anymore, then part of me will be like, all right, that's what that is. And then maybe it would open me up to start anew at something else. I don't know. But uh, I'm assuming at this point, I don't even know like how much auditioning you do. Yeah. People just give you yeah. roles, right? It's a, it's a different, it's a whole different. Yeah. Um, right. People give me roles. Um, usually. Uh, because, I, I mean, I predominantly work with people that I'm... Um, they're either my friends or the friend of my friends, or I'm recommended by an actor or that's working with them. Or they, movie. Yeah. yeah, but that's like actually pretty rare. That's only happened a couple of times where somebody saw, like sometimes somebody who I already know, sort of like loosely, or like they're a friend, of, they'll see me in something and they'll tell me like, hey, I've known you for a while. Wasn't really sure if you'd be right for this thing I've been writing, but then I saw this movie you did and actually I think you would be okay for this or whatever. And, and I do like sometimes like I'll um, tape for like people that bring me in and they'll like tape me uh, just to kind of like, cause a lot of times it's not just a director's like in the end, I guess it's a director's choice, but they want to make sure that like the producers or if they have a co-writer, everyone's on board. So I've taped for stuff, even if it's people in my like social world um, mm -hmm. and stuff I've gotten and stuff I haven't gotten. Like mm -hmm. I've had like friends like tape me and then not use me and like, I get it. Like, um, and, uh, and I've had like meetings with people I know where they bring me in, they talk about, they like, look, I've narrowed it down to you and somebody else and we have a conversation. Sometimes that will end up mm. with me not getting it. Mm -hmm. And whenever I don't get those, it's always really nice because they're usually pretty open about like who they're, why they're considering. It's usually like almost always when it's narrowed down to me and somebody else, we're like very, uh, sort of the same type-ish, but like very, like there's something starkly different about uh -huh. us. And so whenever they, like, they tell me who it is, it's like, yeah, like that. I, I, actually, I actually think that that makes more sense, like uh -huh. that energy than this energy kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but I mean, so yeah, I don't like totally, like of the things that I've been in, um, only a handful, I think I've been through auditions, like the standard approach. And that's not to say I haven't auditioned um, quite a bit. Uh, I, I don't have an agent, but I have a, a manager who, who sends me out on stuff once every couple months. Uh -huh. and. Uh, and that, yeah, I'm just, that's not a skill set I'm great at. Yeah. Auditioning. Yeah. And uh, I haven't talked to anybody who said that, that they're, they're great good at auditioning. At, no. I wonder, like, like, with me and all the people that say they're not good at auditioning, I wonder if, like, we talked to the casting directors who had seen all of us, if they would agree, or if it's just such that's a thing a where question. you're like, because like, a lot of times you're like, I'm not good at auditioning because I went in and I felt bad and I didn't get the part. But I think you're gonna feel good, uh, feel bad, even if you get the part. It's just like not a fun experience to right. go into. I mean, I'm sure there's ways of like routing your brain where it's fun. And I know these people like to talk about like auditions um, is like a good opportunity, like to like sort of work uh, to work yeah. and to like you should take it seriously. And like a lot of times, if you're an actor, you're just like not acting a lot. And these are like if you really like doing it, it's an and those are great and fine, but like that's not the kind of acting I like doing. I don't like acting with people that aren't actors in a room where there's no real camera and there's not a film crew. You know, like, like that to me is not the acting that I actually sort of get some kind of spark or energy from. Right, right. Um, that feels like going into a, like a, a job interview. And I know like there's, I'm sure there's like, I know that there's all these like kind of like uh, seminars that like casting directors will do to work with actors and that are specifically about the audition process which I've never done. I've never, I've never gone through anything like that, but, um, and I'm sure that there'd be things to learn and take from uh, if I did one of those things. Um, but in the meantime, I, yeah, I go on an audition once every few months and uh, I feel like I do better if there's like a couple in close succession because like you don't feel like, you know, if you have one, then that's your only audition, so it's a big deal. But if you have two, none of them can really be that big of a deal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, of the 
two or three I'm thinking of like two or three directors that like if they if they make their new movie and you're not in it mm -hmm. are you are you like what what, what the hell are you no what, what's <laughs> no no I, I know but I get that I think there's like a I've talked to a lot of friends lately who are um whether it's like a cinematographer who's worked with a director and then they decide to use a different cinematographer and there's actors who have worked with people in a lot of things and they don't use them and uh I think that like I get the frustration, but for me, it's a sign that like the filmmakers are not on autopilot. Right. Um, and so, yeah, there's not a single filmmaker that I work with. I guess the only person who I've worked with, like kind of every, almost everything they've done since I started working with them would be like Alex Perry, and I guess now Nathan Silver a little bit. Um, but like, yeah, if they made something that but I think that like they want me to be there because like I'm their friend and I think it like brings it back to the essence of what we were initially mm. doing years mm -hmm. ago. So I think mm -hmm. it's nice. And like, you know, like, I mean, I just did Alex's movie and I had like two lines, but I, I was like around the whole time. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't have those two lines, I would still have been around all the time just as oh. like a friend to help out and stuff like that, you know? Uh -huh. So it's like, um, you know, in some ways I feel like if I really was like a serious actor that like felt like... Uh, this like thing like you need me or whatever it'd be almost an insult to have like a two line part you know like yeah. that's not you know it's just like a so yeah I mean I've and so like with Bob Byington we worked on like three things in a row and then the next two things I had nothing to do with mm -hmm. and then I went back and, and worked on something with him last year um, no I just don't think people should f like I think there's like a nice thing about like loyalty and uh, and consistency and I, I think that's great when filmmakers use the same department heads move you know time like same uh, hair and makeup team the same like whatever team but um, I don't know it's also good to just like be experimenting and trying new mm -hmm. things and as, as long as it's not some like weird like kind of like cynical or like, you know something where like they're just like scrapping everybody and going with like the new flashy what whoever because now they have money and they have access to these right. if it's something like that where maybe it'd be like a little bit more like uh, offensive just but not for me personally but just from like a whole like sort of standpoint of like yeah losing sight of things yeah but but at this point yeah there's nobody and I, I, I if anybody's listening who works with me you don't have to cast me in your next thing unless you want to I believe you let's say you're paired with somebody in a scene or in a whole movie that just isn't on your level whether it's improv wise mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. just stylistically yeah what do you what do you do when I work with filmmakers, my main thing, I think, is about trying to get on the frequency of what they're doing. Like, that's, like, my main thing is, like, what, not, like, specifically what movies, is, like, should I compare this to, but just, like, what is this, like, you know, what, why are we making this thing? What is, what is the goal of this thing? And so I think that, like, um, if you're working with an actor that you're not, like, linking up with, I feel like in some ways that might be either I'm messing up and I'm not, like, doing the thing that we talked about doing, or it's that they haven't had that the director hasn't had the conversation with that person. Um, so as like an actor, it's like a thing is like obviously like I can feel it when a scene's not going as well, and like a lot of times I'll take like that on like that it's like me or it's them or it's equal. It's our, our pairing. It doesn't always like add up or whatever. But I, I think that like um, I can't. I, I, I'm not making the movie, and so like I don't feel like this crazy pressure for myself to try and. Um, I like feel like I'm gonna like if I feel like I'm doing something that's like in the spirit of the movie and somebody's not I don't really think it does a like a favor to the movie for me to adjust what I'm doing to try and like hit because mm. I think sometimes what you, what I am doing is like figuring out things I'm calibrating and I'm trying to get as close to a person's like on the same frequency but if I feel like the person's like uh, you know I just think that they're like maybe off on their own thing or they're being for whatever reason again I might have a conversation with the director of just like in like kind of vague, like inoffensive terms of like, so are, what are we, you know, what are we trying to do here? I thought we were doing this, but maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, <laughs> can you guide me towards it? Yeah. But it's not like, I don't have any kind of, like one, I don't, I don't, I don't work with like actors that I've ever felt like, um, you know, who's this person? Like, they're not like up to snuff. Like I'm acting, whatever. Like I don't have mm -hmm. that. I, I have zero uh, sort of instances or stories of that kind of thing, which I'm sure many actors do have lots of stories about that. Um, but you know, like I've had situations where like people just have never like improvised before, and yeah. 
Like my personality is like, I don't want to, like I think sometimes if you like stress somebody out in the midst of improv, improving, they just get worse. Yeah. So for instance, like I did something where like I was, we did an improv. And so for me, like the way to like sort of make like the first few takes of doing improv scenes to try and like, basically you're trying to find something interesting and, and like sort of like, so a lot of times like the first few takes, I'll like say drastically different things in an improv, just like this time, Let's try it if, if I went this direction, which is hostile. The next take, maybe I'll do one where I'm like kind of agreeable. And I've done things where like, it's like, all right, we're gonna do an improv, we're gonna do an improv. And then on take two, the other actor like will stop and be like, hey, you know, last take you were going this way, and this take you're going this way. And I was like, okay, so this is like, this person isn't comfortable with this like sort of going in all directions. So I'll say, all right, let's go back to one and I'll just, isn't that the name of this podcast? <laughs> it happened. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> okay, sorry. He falls in as a winner. That's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, but you know, I'm using it in a different way. But yeah, like, uh, yeah. but uh, and then uh, it'll be th like I'll just like kind of stick with them. Like I don't want to abandon somebody. I don't like my, the, at the end. Like we're only like no uh, people are only feel good as if we get like the scene. So like I'm not going to try and like power. But again, I do feel like there's a lot of like, responsibility directors need to have when they're working with actors that are on different frequencies. That's Thank not you. really my job. Thank you. I can try and help, but it's not my job. That's right. I think I feel like actors kind of put that on themselves yeah. too much because directors suck a lot. Yeah. None of them we're, we've been talking about. I'm just saying, no. you know, in general. And I, I think the way I'm talking about it now is not exactly how I feel. On, that's the thing is like, t I always like, the idea of talking about acting is really, for me, it's like a nice sort of interesting thing, I guess, to talk about, but it doesn't actually ever feel totally accurate to what it feels like on set. Like right. me explaining all this stuff to you about my like thought process, it's all like hindsight. Like in the moment, right. I'm, not, I'm not really this like clear about. Yeah, but wait, wait, talk, talk to me about that. How do you get yourself in that moment to be free? Um, I like, for me, I think that like uh, my, the things I feel most free at is one, I, I think it's, this is not for like everybody and this doesn't always get to work for me, but I try if I can to formulate some kind of dynamic with the other actors. And I try, and it's hard if you're like kind of day playing for a day or two and you show up like after lunch, right. a week into shooting, like you don't really get to like sort of establish you know your 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 first interaction with the other actor might be when they're like tired and cranky because the first scene took too long that day um but for me like that if i can like anything that i feel good about like the performance stuff that i've done that i think i feel a little bit more like i could feel something uh, close to what they call pride would be um where i'm acting with people who i felt a connection like i felt i was and it's a lot to, a lot of people i met that day hmm. But like in that day, like in that thing, in that shared thing of like we are the only people right now in the entire world that is in this specific movie in this specific scene. Like like there's like a for me that is like when I feel a, a, a little bit more free is like when I just feel like kind of like um, usually when you're doing scenes with another character, it's about the dynamic between these two people. It's about some plot thing, but with these two people. But like so, if you can really like, I mean, acting's fake, but there has to be something kind of real to it. Um, and so for me, that's like a, that's just like, like the huge thing for me. And like kind of the great thing about acting is that like you get to have sometimes short lived, but like just, you know, human connections. Um, so I feel like I feel free there. I feel like if I'm making something that's supposed to be humorous, I feel free when I know the director's sense of humor, mm -hmm. cause then you're kind of like guiding things towards, cause I feel like if you, if somebody's making like an independent thing, that's like their vision of like what involves comedy you should you know you should like make it to where at the end of it it's a thing they would laugh at i think you know it's like a, a independent thing should be obviously they're a, a collection of a bunch of people working on them to make something but at the end of it the individual who like wrote the thing or is directing the thing um hopefully their sensibilities come through and so that's a weird thing for an actor to like sort of you know part of the, not even the responsibility, but the hope as an actor is that you are helping somebody get their specific sensibility across. Because I think people are just different. People's sense of humor are different. And that's a weird thing that like, if you're like a stand-up comedian, you just say your sense of humor and then it's out there. If you're a, 
uh, musician, you have your sort of thing that you're focused yeah. on, you do this, but like a director might have a very specific sort of sensibility, but then they have to take a bunch of people that don't necessarily have that sensibility and have it somehow add up to that sensibility. So I think sometimes like for me, just like knowing the director, and again, especially if it's like comedic, to know their sense of humor, I feel uh, more free, but also like more like just like channeled and encouraged. Cause like I'm on that frequency. Mm -hmm. There's just these like weird, like sort of like, you know, like things where you like figure out, um, and I'm not talking about it in some kind of like spiritual, like out there way, but you just figure out like, oh, th this person doesn't like this color. This person likes this color. So I'm going to give them this color. And it's just like these things where you like guide it towards a thing. And like, sometimes like I don't really d agree with the director's sensibilities, but I don't feel, again, I don't feel like as an actor, like I want to help something as much as I can help it, but I don't want to be like selfish and try and guide it away from what a person wants. What do you need from a director? I would love to work with um, a bunch of directors outside of my friend group. Or like, you know, I don't work typically with like sort of people who have made movies over decades or I don't, you know, it's a lot of, for me, it's new people and people that are in my like social world. And so it's like a, um, eh, the directing thing I think is a little bit different when you're making like small personal homespun things because like I think so much of uh, the directing or, or everything is just like, uh, just by casting me, it, like a friend casting me. I, I know, like, so like, for instance, like Alex Perry, sometimes he'll, he'll cast me where like, he'll just write Keith in the script as a character name. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying, I think like when I get that, it's like, look, I want you here, I want you to just like do the thing that we do together. Like our like sort of like whatever thing is like, I want you to come and like bring that like sort of like weird mischievous thing to these scenes. Cause like, uh -huh. and so that I don't really need direction. And he does, and he'll, his direction like that, like sometimes Alex, when he'll talk to me or some of the other people he's used before is like, I wrote this part for you. There's nothing you can do wrong. So that's good direction. Right. I mean, some people would be driven mad by that direction, right. but for me, I know what he means. And like, so that's right. a good thing. Um, I think sometimes when you're working with people, you feel like, oh, they, sh I wish they were like directing me more, but it's like a little bit like of a be careful what you wish for thing. Cause sometimes yeah. if you're doing a scene and like it's with two other characters, but the director is just suddenly directing you a lot, it just makes you feel like you're doing a really bad job. And you, I don't, I feel like for me is if you're going to interrupt the actor, in a way that I think is good. You're giving direction. I think it's a good thing. But like, it's really helpful if you can um, have pretty specific direction. Just kind of like saying, you know, you're playing it to this. Uh -huh. Then it leads you just like, okay, well then every other thing but that is now open. What, you know, what do yeah. you want from, you know, like, cause like it's embarrassing to be an actor and try something and it goes wrong and you feel that it's not like right. And the director says, you know, in between, they're like, oh, you know, um, what you're doing there, I don't think that's really working. And you're like, yeah. And like, all right, so let's just try something different and let's go. And then, like, you're like, oh, my, you thought that was bad. Check out the sec second option. <laughs> this is even worse. Yeah. Um, so I think, like, that's the thing. Is like, it, like it's, okay, it, it's okay to not, like, over-direct if you've given people confidence and, like, sort mm. of encouragement before they even start. And then if you are, if that's not the case, or if you're going to give direction, I would say just, like, you know, um, they can be like poetic, you know, they can be sort of like, sort of whatever, like people talk about the way like David Lynch, whatever directs and they're these really sort of strange mm -hmm. uh, things or they're specific. I think you talked to somebody who like worked on one of the things and, and the, his direction was like, you're a real person and that's good direction. Cause like you're in a movie or a show that's like very surreal or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the direction is you're not that you are this. That's like simple, specific things I think are good a lot of times because it, if you get really complicated, I think you'll just overwhelm actors a lot of times. I have like a lot of empathy um, for directors. I think that like a lot of times people get really frustrated because directors aren't like all knowing. But I think for like a lot of the, what's great about like sort of a certain type of filmmaking process that's kind of open and exciting is a little sort of, of like venturing into the unknown. And so I sometimes get bummed out when I see like crew members or like I mean, sometimes directors just are to totally lost and it can be frustrating. But sometimes like when a director will be a little bit like kind of 
you know, flustered or not exactly have the right thing to say at that moment. I don't think it's like like a sign of like a bad director, right, you know. Right. Um, I think it's just a thing of like, you know, sometimes when you like tread into like murky waters, you get stuck by stuff every right. once in a while. Um, so I try and be like, again, I know I keep saying this, but like I'm working a lot of times with people that are like I'm friendly with or friends with. And so I have like a little bit more, but, but I think by doing that, then when I work with people who are maybe outside of that, I kind of take whatever good graces I give towards my friends, I would try and give towards those people too. That said, like if you're making a movie, part of the job as director is to be like the captain. And so that's the thing is like watching people that like think because they don't know every answer, it means that they're not really a director and then they like crumble. Like there's the, the mm -hmm. no good can come out of that. But the thing of being like a little bit open to the idea of not exactly knowing specifically every answer, I don't think is a sign of a bad director. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a philosophy regarding comedy? Mm -hmm. The reason why I like you in movies and, and why I think people are using is because you don't land on the nose of the laugh. Someone would say, well, that's, that's called uh, off beat, which is another horrible word. It's not what I'm trying to say at all. So I'm going to ask that without asking it. Go. Okay. Um, you know what I'm saying? Though. Yeah, I a guy auditioned for a sitcom a few years ago, mm -hmm. and it was at the CBS building. And uh, I went up there, and it was like for like you know an offshoot of like Two and a Half Men, not an offshoot, but like by the creators of Two and a uh -huh, Half Men. Uh -huh. And like, why I came out of it being very impressed by sitcom actors. It's a really specific skill set that. I know you can like, I know that there are classes again for that. Like I've talked yeah. to somebody who did like a thing like, yeah, to do this kind of joke, you have to like go low here and you go high here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, but after the, but I just realized as I was like doing the audition that like I just could not, there's just some part of me that rejected these punchlines. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And so, yeah. and so, um, and so I knew that these were the lines for these scenes. And so I would say the lines, but I would, you know, make the pause the joke and the, the punchline the throwaway. Yes. And, um, and afterwards, the casting assistant, uh, she basically said, like, you should audition for the, you know, maybe a comedic ish character on a drama, but you should never audition for a sitcom ever again. Wait, those words? No, I don't remember exactly. But right, that, but th that yes, was the yes. gist. I mean, that was, I, do, I wasn't like Don't ever harsh do this it. again. Like, it was definitely, yeah, it was definitely like, this is not for you. And so, and, um, and she's right. And like, I've had a couple times since then that like, uh, I'll, my manager will send me like an audition for a sitcom and it will be for like one of the lead type things. And like, I, and I think, well, I talked to somebody and they told me there's like a method to do it. And I just like, I don't know how to make, and I don't find them funny. Like most of these shows I also don't find funny. Um, yeah. And I think that like, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are on sitcoms that don't specifically find them funny or even if they did initially at a certain point it becomes such like a routine, there's no way to. But um, I, so when I like am approaching comedy, I know it's kind of like a obvious thing is like, I think that like comedy played as comedy is not usually very funny. And so twisting things around a little bit i'm not like overly i don't like practice jokes before i do them i don't you know i don't because you know and, and from take to take you'll see like this joke i'm trying to make it funny by a pause this take two i'm making i'm trying to make it funny by stammering on a word take three i'm trying to do it by you know basically like an eye roll and it, there's a little bit of thing where like i think if you watch the raw footage for a lot of things that maybe turn out to be kind of comedic there's a bunch of really unfunny versions I mean and maybe those versions would be funny to somebody else but like to the filmmaker those aren't funny so I think that there's a thing of like um, you know and like this is like when I'm doing comedy stuff it's mostly like it's it's playing with like aloofness and it's playing with like shitty behavior it's playing with people that are like arrogant and mm -hmm. people that are just you know the audience can look at these people from and judge them like you know when you interact with your day-to-day -day life i try not to be like super harsh but if it's like a character who you think is maybe playing it for a laugh like you can judge them um but yeah i don't have like some crazy philosophy other than i'm not good at 
most straightforward jokes. Like some people I know, like they'll be like, I don't think you're funny, but you're funny in this movie. And I'm like, I think I'm funny, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm not that funny, but like people have like very much like seen stuff that I've done. They're like, oh, I'm surprised that you're funny in that because you're not a funny person. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Funny is like very much an opinion, and a lot of times I'll be in a room where people are laughing at a joke, and I'm not laughing, and in that moment I'll think, oh, I guess I've lost my sense of humor. The reality is like it's just like different different senses of humor mm -hmm. and I've worked with like filmmakers that are really they have really specific senses of humor and I'm trying to make them laugh and I think that is a lot of what I'm doing so like with like Nathan Silver versus Alex Perry versus Bob Byington I'm sure to like an outside eye those guys have very similar senses of humor I think they're wildly different mm. and I know when I'm doing their movies that I'm playing to them more than I'm and I'm playing to like if I have another actor in the scene, I'm like not trying to make, I'm not trying to like make somebody crack up in a take, I'm not like that, but like, I don't know, you like figure out what rhythms you have with other people to make things kind of have like a surreal or sort of, you know, just like other quality to them. It's kind of like that, that the, the, the thing that doesn't work for that, for the sitcom, is what seems to be working for these people that are working with you and want to use you because they're looking for a little bit more than somebody to just say the line. Right. Like they're, they, they, your imagination and your, you know, imagination with the actor, I think, is an important thing that people don't don't um, think is is there. Yeah. Because they think, no, it's performance art. No, there's an imagination, literally, an imagination, yeah. uh, the creative, that creative muscle that you're using. Yeah. In your in in the movies that I like that you're yeah. doing. It's almost like a like a like a factory thing, the the sitcom. It's like a, yeah. hit this thing here, you know, and you got to know exactly yeah. how to do it. It's like a hit a ball, like yeah. right at the thing, so you hit it down the third base line. But also, I think that like I as a, a, a uh, I guess non trained. I feel like there must be a more flattering word that I could give myself, like a self self taught. A self taught. Yeah, okay. sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> performer is like I don't have the. Um, I, I, when I like I uh, when I'm thinking about going in to do a, a part or something like that I do think about it a lot and I do think about character stuff and I do uh, I think work that's probably similar to people who have gone through some kind of training in a certain way but I also don't come with super specific ideas of what I'm going to do as a result I am not the most consistent person even if I want to be take to take which I usually don't want to be but like, I'm just saying like you know, if it was a, a continuity person on set, I'm not their favorite guy on set or whatever. Because, I mean, I think in some way I'm trying to, like, sort of um, just, like, you know, uh, feed off, like, whatever's happening right then and there or whatever. And the reality is that, like, what's happening now and what happens in three minutes after there's been, like, a, a little bit of a break or whatever, it's going to be, like, like, I don't, and I don't really, like, Unless the other actor really wants to, I don't really aggressively need to hold on to the minute we just did because usually they got it. They, whatever we did there, most takes, they got that, and then we can do something else, and then we do that. Um, but that again is like for, for when you're doing small parts, and it's when you're trying out certain type of jokes. It doesn't really work for extended dramatic work. Um, so again, like knowing these kind of things of what what uh, I bring in different, I think, sort of sense of what I need to be doing then and there based on what the project is, based on what the character is or whatever. Uh, but yeah, but in general, I, I'm an experimenter by uh, lack of my general lack of control. I'm an experimenter. It's just like, even if I don't want to be experimenting, I'm experimenting. So I love that. Yeah. Keith Paulson, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Act to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of IFP, the Independent Filmmaker Project.